Hi, this is Prios and I'm a professional gambler. Today we look into the most epic battle in online poker history. Apparently this should be Isildur, Victor Blom versus Der Tom Dwan. And I sort of agree, I mean they played like crazy and Der got crushed very hard if I remember correctly for like a couple of million, six million or something. And yeah, this video originally comes from Two Card Confidence. Never watched a video of his. Well, I want to try it out. Um, it was recommended to me by YouTube. I didn't uh, watch it beforehand. So let's dive into the content. Whoa. Today, Whoa. we're going back in time to a time when online poker was still living very well off of its boom, when full tilt poker was still there. No, I'm not crying, you're crying. I think full tilt poker car is still there, right? But it's more or less stars. And when an unknown player named Isildur One came out of nowhere battling the best players in the world at the highest stakes possible, sometimes even simultaneously. Probably the most epic of these battles was against Durr, Tom Duan, who at that time was known as maybe the most aggressive player and the king of No Limit Hold'em, Isildur. By the way, that's not true. I mean, even back in the day, Durr was a terrible player. I think he's actually even better today than he was back in the day. I mean, that's logical, but he was terrible. I think he still has no... Um, is not good at all against any good player he will lose probably he will lose against any decent uh no limit hold 1k regular i mean i used to hunt him actually i always thought that he's a huge fish and played him at six max i mean in in heads up he isn't that bad because yeah he played the same style in ring game as in heads up and that's obviously cr not good and yeah, I mean, even in heads up, he was terrible. I mean, he did very, very stupid things like playing 10 people at the same time, heads up, three different opponents. I know a couple of guys who made millions out of him. And basically everyone who was pro at the time and good agreed that Durr is bad. Okay, let's get into it. Surely knew how to challenge that. Yes. It was wild. But how good were these guys actually compared to today's level of... Yeah, uh, hi, uh, Lost Paradise. I uh, I think I'm not having any side at my disposal <laughs> to play heads up anymore. Um, yeah, as I'm banned on most sides due to uh, winning in their casinos. And I think heads up isn't a thing anymore, more or less, today as... As yeah, most sites removed it because yeah, the edge of players are bigger in heads up, and the online poker industry does not want players to take too much money out of the system. And that's why most sites don't have heads up anymore. I've, in my eyes, iPoker probably has, but yeah, I mean, there, there are like 100 tables open. Every guy sitting at four tables, only playing huge fish, and if another regular joins, they button the guy. I mean, in one session I tried to play heads up, and I joined like 50 people, everyone was just buttoning me, and yeah, it's just annoying, and it's pathetic, and no heads up is getting played anymore today. I mean, not not uh, not much, at least. Uh, Jay Nendes... Yeah, apps might be good, but yeah, I don't know if I want to go down this road. I mean, it's illegal gambling, and this also comes with a lot more other problems, like you have to trust the operator of the room. There's a lot of collusion going on. I mean, in heads up, probably no collusion, but in, in ring games, at least there is. And the rake is enormous. You pay like, whatever, 2 BB per hand and stuff. Yeah, Stars has, has uh, heads up uh, in Zoom format, which I hate. I mean, this takes away m many elements of heads up. And I'm also banned on Stars. <laughs> this was my favorite site before got it getting banned. Play. Years before the first solver became public, you had to figure stuff out for yourself. 
and couldn't just ask the almighty for a solution. So in hindsight, how close to GTO did they actually get? In this hand, 200 big blinds deep, Isildur 3 bets queens and Duan calls king 5 suited. Both plays are standard for heads up. On the 9 high suited flop, Isildur goes for a 60-ish percent pot bet, which is definitely not a bad sizing, but the server would prefer a bigger one. On a dynamic board like this, it is more profitable to put in a lot of money early when you have a good but somewhat vulnerable hand like queens without a club. Almost every flush draw is just a call. And bing, Duan sees the best possible card on the turn. It's also at the same time the worst possible card for Isildur. Um, I'm not a No Limit Hold'em expert, but I think he should now check and probably fold. Not so much for queens, which check, as should practically Isildur's entire range. Duan of course wants to bet, and he actually nails the sizing with the two-thirds pot bet. This is the solver's preferred sizing, even if we give it seven options to choose from. This is, there's just no way Tom Duan plays close to GTO, even nowadays he does not, I mean, he's... He just was a very bad player at the time, and yeah, as I already mentioned, I mean, I don't know why there is a legend building around him that he's so great. He, he just is not. He's just not fearful at all and plays very splashy, and he had some appearances on, like, high-stakes poker where he did this crazy bluff, and that probably gave him the reputation of being the best and fearless and stuff, but... He, fearless he is, I have to admit, but he's not a good poker player. Isildur, on the other hand, would be inclined to fold his queens without a club. I got it right, although not a No Limit Oldham expert. Even though it has been a pretty hand so far, it doesn't perform well against Duan's betting range on this turn, which includes a bunch of hands that have him drawing dead already, or drawing to two outs. And even his bluffs have great equity. He does call, however. I love uh, this format, by the way. I mean, this guy does a great job. And yeah, I will also, at least on YouTube when I publish it, uh, link uh, the link, a uh, link his channel and, or the video. And let's see what the comments say. Yes, I understand, but it's sad that you completely abandoned playing after making so much from poker. Yeah, I mean, what can you do if you can't play anymore? And yeah, it's also, it's it's quite different to what it used to be. I mean, it's very hard to, to make money nowadays. I think if you uh, really want to make money, you have to get either in private games live or um, yeah, get on these apps and you also need connections and get into the right rooms. And often you will be thrown out if you are too good and winning too much or the uh, operator or the guy who's running the pool will come to you and say hey look i need a share of your money otherwise i will remove you from the pool and yeah it's it's just shady all around and it could also be the case that some players play on credit and lose very much and at some points they might not pay anymore and then you are you don't get the money basically the same as it was with full tilt where people had to wait many years until they finally get paid and this also was just lucky that we got our money back i also got very lucky getting getting more than 100k back from full tilt but yeah in hindsight this was not good and you are in the same situation with the apps and it's also not regulated at all and yeah collusion and stuff will be big on that too and this happens looks bam he's all in probably a terrible play he's turning his queens into a bluff i mean he can get better hands to fold true but i don't like it crazy well it is a thing just not for this hand or not for the sizing queens without a club can sometimes go for a dunk bet but only for a small sizing a block bet this is a bluff as no worse hand would call. But some better hands would fold according to the sim, and we also prevent worse hands from bluffing us. It's just that black bets didn't really exist back then. That's actually not true. Um, I used block bets back in the day, and yeah, it was especially great to 
to induce bluffs from some uh, maniac type fish that just saw like a tiny bat and got angry and raised you and that's exactly what I wanted so but it's it's not the you not the how you use block birds most of the time nowadays but yeah it, it was a thing and we still had the concept I mean it wasn't GTO a GTO concept and um, soft to the last bit but they it still existed back in the day okay comment yeah i try to play only heads up mostly on apps but to be honest doesn't look like much collusion or or cheating with how bad people are <laughs> yeah i'm not sure maybe they are bad but still colluding so you never know not much six marks action in my club anyways, cause most people play five card. Yeah, five card really sucks. I mean, I think in the apps, five card and six cards are very bit, uh, very big games, but yeah, I think it's, it's just like net pedaling every hand with uh, five card and six card pillow. And six card pillow is even worse, so yeah. But yeah, P fish, uh, for some reason, love this format, but I'm also not a huge fan. And yeah, I mean, yeah, I think you're also from Germany, right? So you have basically no other option when uh, play on the apps. And yeah, it's players are terrible, but if you when you play like pay like 50 BB per hundred in rake, the players have to be very, very bad in order to uh, beat them in heads up. Almost nobody ever bets more, so the concept of a black bet wasn't really accessible. What is it? Yeah, it's it's it's, it's strange. Online, five card is dead, um, but on the apps, people love it. Gildo did notice, though. I mean, maybe that's also because uh, yeah, the fish don't play online anymore. They they love they like it more on the apps because yeah, the competition is yeah a lot less, and I now many rooms are also like recreational only, and but yeah, there's pros are still getting in but they will often get banned quite quickly is that this specific river does bring a significant shift to the board now a lot of hands you could likely have played this way such as aces nines nine eight or even kings with a club improved significantly and since duan's range consists of so many medium flushes which might just choose to check behind on the fourth club and the board pairing isildo has incentive to just donk by this nudish hands himself and he probably figured that queens are one of the few hands he would check call the turn with that are now worth almost nothing. So why not turn them into a bluff and represent one of these nudish hands? Yeah, this, this actually was a concept back in the day. When you are at the bottom of your range, it, <laughs> it can't be too bad to bluff though. So yeah, that's probably what easy to afford in this one. So the thought process behind the play is really <laughs> profound. It's just the hands that... Okay, the rake is not bad where you play. It's 5 BB, 3 BB cap, I guess. A 2 4, and I get 87% rake back. Yeah, okay. If you have a huge uh, rake back percentage, um, it's, it makes sense. 80% is 87%. How did you manage to get such a good deal? So, yeah, then it's actually reasonable to play there. Um, Wow, 87%. I thought that the organizers probably will not give that much. But yeah, that's nice. Um, yeah, I also am now a guy who's grinding these apps. Actually, I think he's not winning much, but he's also having good rakeback deals, and most of the money comes from the rakeback. Collection that could be optimized a lot. The server would prefer pairs as a bluff to at least block in positions full houses. But that's a hard thing to know when solvers are not yet existing. Oh, can't see everything now. Uh, so let's. Where do I have to go? This turn this off. It's, it's not helping much as it's my my counter file. <laughs> okay, let's. I mean, I made the mistake once. Not trying not to repeat it. In another video. Almost same board from about a flush draw. Okay. What? Uh, I mean, I guess he fought 
Gutshot and overcards. 12 outs. That's how Durr used to play. Yeah, he's not good, as, said, as I said. Well, I'm sorry, Tom, but that GTO award, uh, we're gonna need that back. In this hand, Isilda opens Queen Jack off and one calls with 6 7 suited. Both plays are fine, even though 6 7 suited would mostly choose to 3 bet in the simulation. On the Jack High flop, Isildo C bets 5k into 6, and again we see a noticeable difference to today's games in. Yeah, I think that's too, probably too big. I mean, at least in PLO, on these lockdown monochrome boards, you bet small. In the bet sizing. As said, small sizings basically didn't exist, especially not for C bets. While nowadays C betting one third is standard, it was two thirds or three quarters back then. Same goes for pre flop. Today, we see opens of 2.5x at max sometimes even 2.2x or a 2x. Back then, it was basically 3x all the time. That's also not true. I mean, many people do smaller opens or did smaller opens or experimented with it um, at the time. Uh, okay, let's read another comment. Um, I am a club owner, so I get all the rake back other than the union free. Okay, so you are one of the criminals <laughs> organizing this stuff. <laughs> uh, oh, a very good question if he still plays. I'm not sure. But yeah, he he is actually, I think he's like a natural, not doing that much theory, but he makes a mistake. He's, 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 getting, he's getting good in the games quite uh, fast, but he makes a mistake to always play the best guys. And... If the best guys don't play him anymore, he just goes to a completely different game and then yeah, loses the money back. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, but yeah. <laughs> so even though it's not a big mistake to bet big on Jack for two suited, the solver really doesn't <laughs> like it. And on other flops, such as paired ones, it does actually make a difference. So let's adjust the sim to only use this big sizing on the flop. The overall betting frequency goes down and Queen Jack mixes bets and checks. Dur check causes flush draw, which is totally fine. The turn is a queen, and Isildur understandably barrels. Again, he goes for this close to pot sizing, which is the solver's only choice if only given a smaller option. However, in today's games, we would expect a good player to recognize that this is a great spot to overbet, which is also the solver's sizing for this combo if given the choice. The board is dynamic again, including two flush draws, and the in-position player has another advantage. So just like in the hand before, he wants to leverage this advantage by putting in as much money as possible now, while the board is still in his favor. Back then, overbetting didn't really exist. In fact, although these two guys, Isildur and Durr are crazy, and especially Durr did a lot of experimenting with overbetting, and Isildur also did it. So, it, 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 it was a thing, but not many people used it, but these two guys did. Isilda was actually the first player who regularly used overbets that were non-all-ins, but he only really used them on the river, if I recall correctly. Now, even against the non-overbet, six... Ah, okay, so yeah, but it's close to <laughs> what I was saying, yeah. Yeah, I mean, in Germany you are basically forced into these uh, underground games because yeah <laughs> what sh what should you do otherwise the regulation is just crazy and retarded and <laughs> they just put limitations on german players that make no sense like you don't have to you can't choose your seat anymore you can't choose your game anymore although all other people in the player pool still can i mean it's just completely stupid and nobody knows why they did it and they also put like very low deposit limits and stuff. You probably would be in trouble though if uh, someone from the legislation finds out. <laughs> I mean, it's it's. I mean, the players probably will get out there without getting punished. But your position is a bit more tricky when you. I mean, you are not the organizer, but you refer people there and get. Parts of the profits, manage the money and stuff. So yeah, I guess this is a tricky spot to be in. Not sure what the lawyer would say though, I'm, as I'm not a lawyer.
Seven of Hearts is just a fold. However, the meta especially in this battle was pretty much that you don't fold a flush draw. And since you can't really check core seven high on the turn. Oh, I was under the impression that Durr is having a, a flush already. I, um, yeah, I hate it when they don't use um, four color decks. I, my eyes are not good anymore. <laughs> too, too old to play poker. Use a four color deck. That's a good example that you always need to use a four color deck. Because otherwise you can... Can mess it up like I did in this end. Yeah, he's oh, it's obviously a fold with a, like a seven high flush draw, but Durst probably is about to do something stupid. Maybe even stupider than just calling. You gotta raise. Yeah. Which is better than check calling according okay. to the sim, but still losing one big blind on average. Against the raise, Isilda would be mostly calling his range, <laughs> but Queen Jack is actually one of the hands that could go for a jam. Avoiding half a deck full of ugly rivers and getting it in against lower two pairs and some pairs plus flush draws, while also protecting equity against pure flush draws. Yeah, Durr also probably is crazy enough to get in top pair and stuff, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if he puts it in. And Durr also seems to not know about outs and odds, or he just doesn't care, so he might even call it off with a seven high flush draw. Would be quite a benefit for strong hands like top to win sets. He owns By the way, uh, on the uh, apps, do they also play No Limit Hold'em? This is also not played much, right? Just, uh, just asking, don't know. ...only calls and does see one of those ugly rivers. For Duan, 6-7 of hearts is just a give up. And we see that the solver is actually bluffing with no missed flush drawer at all. <laughs> As we block our opponent's folds, which are flush draws as well, we rather choose other combos to put our remaining stack in as a bluff. Hands like 5-3 of spades or clubs, or some jack x combos that are mixed in as check raises on the turn, make for better bluffs on the river as they <coughs> unblock villain's folding range, and or even block his calling range. These hands might be difficult to find though, and that is one of the main benefits that a solver can bring. As with Isildur in the hand before, the thought process behind check raising 6-7 on the turn and bluffing it on the river does make a lot of sense. After all, you make sure you do have bluffs when you jam the river. And it's an overbet. <laughs> As I said, overbets. Where these guys use overbets. I mean, it's only a small one. It's basically pot. And yeah, I think that's very transparent and Durr should not do that ever. And Isildo will call 100% sure. <laughs> I mean, that's... He's just not a good player, as I said. I mean, every draw missed, so... And it's also hard to believe that he has a 4, unless the 4 has a full house too. And are not only jamming your rivered flushes and full houses, but with the help of a solver, we can find strategies that use hand commit. I think um, they said it in the beginning of the video, I think it's like 2009 or something. Nations ...which improve our overall likelihood of success when bluffing and thus increasing our win rate. Back then, finding these correlations on your own... Yeah, back to flush hit, but it's sort of hard to continue on the flop with like diamonds, and then somewhere, somehow get there. And also, you also check raise the turn, so it's, it's hard to have diamonds, I think. But yeah, I mean, Durr is very loose. He could probably have it. And again, I... I missed it. <laughs> Thanks for telling me that uh, back the flush got there. But I, I still think that Isildur has a call. Esther is crazy and overbluffs too much. Yeah, he's basically an overbluffer. ...was close to impossible. But one thing they were always capable of. Calling down six-figure bets. Now, if you want to see today's version of the aggro and bosses battle... Oh, yeah, that's also interesting. We will consider doing it in another video. I, I'm impressed. He well edited, uh, good information. Yeah, I love the videos of this guy. Yeah, like, subscribe, share, or follow if you are on Twitch. Signing off. Good luck at the tables. Bye bye. Until next time. Yeah. If so, you don't hate the bluff. I mean, yeah, Dirt definitely does more crazy stuff. <laughs> sure. And yeah, it, it's not the worst.
I, I, but I saw very, very crazy bad things from him. And yeah, he's definitely not the great player. And b back in the day, he was even worse. Now when I see the life, it's... Yeah, it's he's um, he's definitely improved a lot compared to uh, back in the day. So, but <laughs> anyways, signing off now. Bye-bye.